the vibe and its control over the literal. I stated, quote, Let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably. Unquote. Wittgenstein. This is symbolism. A similar thread of this gestalt crops up in Hemingway's Iceberg Theory, where the author reveals only a partial glimpse of the story, with the emotional weight and meaning of the narrative concealed by the implicit. This is the basis of mimetic warfare, or psychological warfare. Al states, I'm not sure if you're objecting to Wittgenstein here, but is it symbolism or literalism? If something is unutterable, how can one utter it? I stated, in response, no, not at all. Through symbolism, if something that is so abstract cannot be communicated properly through utterance, speech precisely speaking, then it serves the communicator to convey it without utterance. This is through typically creative, visual or symbolic means. The vibe of something is more powerful than what the idea conveys, simply put. By these means, the idea becomes far more widely accessible and popular due to the vehicle of the idea being impressively nebulous and at times, artistically vague in nature, establishing a stratification of understanding of the key concepts of the greater idea, or overarching abstraction amongst the perceivers of the unutterance or the symbolism, esotericism in other words. Uh, the Bible, for example, and uh, the New Testament, we, we find parables used throughout which convey to the diverse readership of the Bible whatever meaning their level of understanding will convey to them. Their understanding of the symbolism or metaphors or parables, that is. This is the way in which one can gradually make palatable ideas that are radical or fringe to the current social norm, pushing the Overton window of acceptance of these said ideas in an incremental fashion. In other words, successful radical reform is not done directly or literally, but through using the vehicle of the implicit as a way to normalise fringe or abstract discourse and ideas. Hemingway's iceberg theory would be, again, similar in this regard. This is mimetic warfare, where people unwittingly mimic concepts or ideas by the allure of its vibe, rather than the merit of the idea itself or its real-world implications. For instance, the fashionable quality of communism through capitalistic and profit-driven pop art of Lenin, Stalin, Marx and Che Guevara. Another is that of Christianity's modern love affair for Israel, along with the oppositional and dialectical reverse seen in the atheistic left and Palestine. And this is communicated and maintained through the vibe that each side of the dialectical uh, divide maintains. For example, we see that the left have begun to wear the desert scarf of the Shema, combine Palestinian sloganeering and symbols with revolutionary pop art, etc. The right to link Israel into the vibe of Abrahamic eschatology and religion, which is far more ancient, yet has the modern evangelical quote-quote vibe attached to it. In this sense, the implicit will always direct the literal. It's more palatable to people, to the masses. Al states, This is like the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures might be better signs than words, or perhaps just inapplicable to discussion, reason and logic. But both pictures and words are signs of the underlying, not the thing itself. They are stand-ins for ideas in mental models. The meaning can only ever be in the beholder. I stated, in response to this, exactly very true. However, the meaning that is derived from the vehicle or symbol will always contain a kernel of that which was seeking to be conveyed. In many ways, the implicit is far more effective a vehicle for truth or information 
because it encourages and invites the beholder to engage his own mind, his own imagination, and from this are new connections, innovations, and informational avenues manifested.